this was my meditation on this scripture. Uh, Dear Jesus, I am so grateful that you redeemed me from the curse of the law because I would not be able to abide by every point of the law. I know that. And I would not be totally obedient to it. Yet, you allow me to abide in you. And so I am redeemed by your love for me. So I thank you, Jesus. And this was a revelation, and I fully am like, this revelation is for each one of us, so please receive it. My daughters, do not sit under self-condemnation. I love you with an everlasting love. And I am delighted with your love and service for my sake. I have made you a light of love in the world, and I have my hand upon you to protect you from the evil one. I will guide you for my sake and for my glory. Trust me, trust my love and guidance. All will be well. And do not worry about anything or things that are to come. Place your trust in me and do not fear, says the Lord. So I would like to just ask the Lord now um, that as I share with you that um, he will speak to your hearts and not so much what I would say, but what God is going to say to you personally. Well, I'd like to start out with this little bit of sharing because I had a wonderful week on Monday. I had been invited to speak to the WCF group in Fallbrook at St. Peter the Apostle. They've got about 15 ladies there. Um, actually, at the meeting, there were 18. I counted every one of those. And so anyway, um, it was wonderful being there. I shared with them. A personal testimony, and during the personal testimony, this one young woman went um, like this, and I thought, wonder what the Lord said to her. It was very exciting, but anyway, she shared with me later that um, her, I believe it was her uncle, was a companion to Father Aloysius, who God used to heal me. And so she was really excited about it, and she said it was because she has this, this little chest next to her bed. She said, this drawer I never open but I had been prompted to open that drawer that last night, and there were the papers and writings from her, uh, from her family, this uncle that had been a companion to Father Aloysius, and so she was reading about it and how God had used Father Aloysius to heal people. And so she was so excited, she said, I knew before you said anything, I knew you were gonna say it was Father Aloysius who healed you, and who God used to heal you. So anyway, it was really sweet. And another lady said uh, this, she said, she went like this also, I'm thinking, wow, what about this group? Everybody's excited, and I'm excited to be here, but what's going on? And so anyway, she said, when she came up, her son had been in um, Tanzania in a ministry of some kind, and he, he's a young man, and he got lost in the swamp. And so he prayed his way, he took him, I don't know if it took him days to get out of the swamp, but he found his way out of the swamp. But in the meantime, we had some kind of a problem uh, with a virus striking him. And so they had been checking him out for several months, trying to find out what it was. But when I described the symptoms of that disease that I had, the suicide disease, she said, I knew that was it, and I'm going to tell the doctor to check him for that particular disease. So God is working in miraculous ways, isn't he? But now this is the funnest part. They took me to lunch after, after the meeting, Jenna and Debbie. And so um, we were at lunch at a restaurant called Z. Suzanne shakes her head. She knows where it is, and she's been there probably. But anyway, we ate our lunch, and when I finished, I said, oh, I've got to get gas. So Donnie was with me, Don Rutland. And so um, we stopped at the gas station, and I'm there, and I'm trying to work that little thing, you know, it keeps clicking off, you know, that cooking off thing. So this, this man was standing there and he was, he had, his was working. He was leaning against his car very casually. And pretty soon he said, can I help you? And I said, oh yes, thank you so much. So he fixed it and so I didn't have to hold on to that either. So anyway, um, he said, oh, I saw you. Did you have a nice lunch? I saw you um, at, Z, at the restaurant Z. I was there. I said, oh really? And so this clicks into my mind right away. We're supposed to evangelize everybody, right? And so that's what the Vatican II documents say. Be on the lookout for any evangelization. Be on the lookout and see who needs to hear about God. So this man, I said, oh, yes, I was having lunch there because I had just spoken to a women's Bible study group and uh, giving testimony. And I was giving testimony on how God healed me. And I gave them testimony on what 
that means to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit and why we pray in tongues. And he said, oh, really? I said, yes, are you a Christian? And he said, well, yes, I am. I pastor the Rock Church in San Diego. <laughs>
and that gold was pure gold. On the table, there would be dishes, cups, jars, and libation bowls, all made of pure gold. And there was always to be fresh bread as a continual offering to the Lord. And sometimes we think of fresh bread when we're reading the Bible. It's like that word is alive and active to it for us. And so when we read the word, it's always really fresh. We think, well, I've read that before. And I remember one time reading this. I had been after a car accident, and I came back to my prayer place, and I was reading my meditation book, Meditation Moments by Still Neely Stam. And uh, the, the top of it, I, we had just been in this auto accident. The top scripture said, he makes me lie down in green pastures. And I said, he makes me? Well, he sure did because I couldn't move, and I, but I had never realized that word before, he makes me like that. And so every time we read the word of God, it's new and fresh, just like fresh bread and it's tasty and good. So in the holy place, there was a lampstand of pure gold. A, a talent of gold was to be used for it. We talked about that. A talent of gold was 75 pounds. And I mentioned to you the last lesson that uh, the crown that they placed on King David's head when he became king, was made of one talent of gold, 75 pounds, a strong neck. Guy. No, they, they hung something, they hung it above him, and they it set on his head. So the pattern would be given to Moses on the mountain, and that's what's happening now, and but then we're also reading the results and how they were obedient to it. There was an area in front of the table of incense, the lampstand and the table of showbread, where a veil hung to separate the holy place from the Holy of Holies, where the Ark of the Covenant would be placed and where God would be seated on the mercy seat. The Holy of Holies was 15 feet by 15 feet by 15 feet and was so holy that only the high priest could enter the Holy of Holies once a year. And there were specific designations of what he could do at that time, what he wore, and so we'll be been studying that as well. So this week we studied about the fabrics used for the tabernacle. There were ten sheets of fine twined linen of purple stuffs, violet shades of red and crimson, and brocaded cherubs on the linen from that from the colors. And the actual looking at your chart, the actual tabernacle size was 14 meters long, which was 45 feet long, and 4.6 meters wide, which was 15 feet wide, and 4.6 meters high, which was 15 feet high. And so over the entire tabernacle tent. There would be goat's hair. And I think, I don't know if you remember, but Father Mark Goring suggested to him that the Lord was speaking to him that that goat's hair, that first covering over the Ark of the Covenant, uh, represented was symbolic of St. Joseph and how he covered the Blessed Virgin Mary, who was the Ark of the New Covenant. And so um, that seemed to represent St. Joseph. And then over the tabernacle, there would be a covering of ram skins, dyed red, and then fine leather over that. So there was a particular covering over that tabernacle. So if we consider that we are the present day temple of God by the power of the Holy Spirit residing in us, we also must be covered. And so we're told in the sacred scriptures that we are now covered in the blood of the Lamb through faith, who is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who shed his blood on the cross for us. This is how we take on our robes of righteousness and our garments of salvation. The love of our holy God and his precious blood covers all of our offenses. The Hebrew scriptures tell us that according to the law of God, everything has to be purified with blood. And if there is no shedding of blood, there is no remission of our sins. And so we will see later that, that the holy priest, the high priest, takes the blood and sprinkles it on the altar um, for God's worship and covenant. This is what Isaiah meant in chapter 1 of Isaiah. He says, Come now, let us talk this over. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be white as wool. This was the prophecy of what the Messiah would accomplish by his life, death, and re resurrection. The shedding of Jesus' precious blood washes us clean and purifies us. The next day's lesson is about the tabernacle and the framework of the tabernacle. Why do you think the foundation and framework was so important? It represents our foundation and rock, who is Jesus the Christ, the rock of our salvation. Well, there were to be 20 frames on the south, 20 on the north, 
eight on the west, and six for the wall, and an additional two frames supporting, which would be a total of 48 frames. The frames were to be supported by 40 silver sockets, two under each frame. Now, the, the ancient Christian commentary says that the silver sockets are symbolic of the prophets, and the frames symbolic of the apostles. The crossbars are used to hold together the frames, five on each side, and a middle bar to run from one end to another to stabilize the frames and the crossbars. Does Jesus have to say about the importance of foundation and framework of our Christian lives? What keeps us strong and grounded? Jesus said, everyone who comes to me and listens to my word and acts on them, he is like the man who, when he built his house, dug and dug deep and laid the foundation on rock. And when the, the river was in flood, it bore down on the house, but could not shake it. It was so well built on foundation of rock. But, and so this represents the one who listens and does nothing is like the man built his house on sand with no foundation. As soon as the flood bore down on it, it collapsed and was ruined. So we need to build our lives on the foundation of Jesus Christ, who is our rock. So we have heard and know we cannot just listen to God's word, but we must act on it in obedience. I don't know if you remember Babsley Bleasdale's words to us always was, obedience brings blessings, and certainly they did. This was um, another important facet that um, keeps a Christian strong, is to stay in community. Janine had a word from the Lord this morning, a vision of a beautiful, huge diamond that was just shining. And that shining diamond, when I got to this word, thinking about the facets of a diamond and how beautiful each facet shines in a different way. And that's, and that's how one community is kept together. You are a facet of that beautiful diamond. And we stay in community, and the church is so important. Jesus wants us to gain strength in our sacramental living as a community, and said to Peter, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So we also stand firm and shine in the world, just like that diamond, um, on our foundation of faith in Jesus, because he is faithful. He is ever faithful. And Jesus says, don't stay away from fellowship. It is where we encourage others. We affirm, edify, encourage, and build up each other in the body of Christ. And it is where we can encourage others when we gather together. Father Mike Berry is always telling us how important it is to gather here at Women's Christian Fellowship for prayer, study, and fellowship. And so Jesus is our way, our truth, and our life. And we find eternal life in his life, death, and resurrection. He sent his Holy Spirit to guide and teach us and to be a light to lead others to the kingdom of heaven. And that's why I'm so excited about evangelizing that pastor because... Um, I need to participate in the work of God any chance I get, and I hope you will do the same. By our witness of love for God's, um, for God and others, in, in James it says this, anyone who can bring back a sinner from the way will be saving a soul from death. That's how we participate in the divine life and work of Jesus and the power of his Holy Spirit in us. I remember... Um, Many years ago, when I first began um, Women's Christian Fellowship, there were families, I, and this is what was shared with me by some of these women, Nancy Audie's family, they were completely transformed and came to Jesus because she was. Helen's family, they all came to Jesus because Helen did. And so we can affect not only our families, but other people if we're willing to share and step out in faith. So now why is the pattern for the tabernacle so exacting? because God would be there, and he is perfect. What about you? You are the temple of the Holy Spirit, the tabernacle of God's presence in the world right now. You are holy, and you are set apart. And I would like you to say, I am holy. I am holy. I have been set apart. I have been set apart. I love Jesus. I, love Jesus. I just had to add that one. Okay. <laughs> you are holy, and you have been set apart by God. And God had a beautiful pattern when he made you. He designed your beautiful eyes in just the color he wanted. He designed your hair and its color. Ooh, mine is not gray yet, and I wonder why. But he designed your beautiful complexion. It's exactly what he wanted you to look like. He designed your body, your height, your smiles, your dimples, all 
to an exact pattern, just like he did the tabernacle. He designed your heart to be a place that would be holy, where he would be welcomed. So you are a living tabernacle of the Most High God. He made you to be his delight. Amen. Amen. So Lord, thank you for this word today. Thank you for the tabernacle and that we are a living tabernacle for your sake and for your glory. Oh Lord, be present with us and let us know the power of your love within us that we may share it with others and give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.